Welcome back, in this tutorial we'll be looking at the injector removal process of this 5 cylinder diesel engine. This was performed as a result of the intake manifold removal job and actually is a good opportunity to send the injectors for machine testing and cleaning before fitting them back on the car. Don't worry, the job is straightforward, simply follow along with the video and you'll be good to go. So if we started already with removing the battery terminal and the MAF sensor. Then we loosen the filter hose clamp and remove some of the air inlet components. Next on the list is the filter box which is normally held by this rubber mount and a clip positioned at the bottom of it. For the injectors we need to first disconnect their plugs and remove the harness out of the way. Next, we grab a 70mm wrench and begin to unscrew the fuel lines. I'm going to open a bracket here, Volvo has a special tool suited for this job, which more or less I think is a standard common rail wrench, however if you're doing this job once in a lifetime, you can cheat as we did and use a normal wrench. The downside is that you can't correctly tie the fuel lines with newton meters, but you can still do it by filling. Next, we want to disconnect the air linnet pipe as that will open a lot of space to remove the bottom side of the fuel lines. Carefully release the PCV nipple and the air hose rubber mount. Removing the return fuel lines requires unlocking them first by rotating anti-clockwise as shown in the video. Thank you. 
We now grab 8mm socket and start loosening the injector bolts. There are two on each side of the clamp. We can now attach the extraction hammer 2 to the injectors and take them out one by one. Make sure you know the order of the injectors before mixing them. Condition looks acceptable for 200,000 km injector. Part 2 is the injectors installation. Now we have received the injectors from their machine testing, their condition is good so we can mount them back. Of course you need to replace all the o-rings as well as the copper gaskets. Part numbers will be in the video description. So we attach the injector clamps back, they are going in only one way so we can hardly get them wrong. Connect back the return fuel lines and the injector plugs. We tie the injectors to 18 Newton meters. Last thing we mount back the fuel lines
The torque spec for them can be seen from the picture on the screen. Injector installation is now complete, something to add here, if you're putting a brand new injectors or had them repaired, most likely they will be returned with different injector codes. Those codes are fuel correction coefficients which are individual for each injector and it's advisable to get them programmed in the issue of the car to guarantee optimal work of the engine. This is not shown in this video but it could easily be done with a good diagnostic tool or maybe V-dash. We can now try starting the engine, bear in mind that as the fuel lines are now empty, the engine will probably crank for a little while before it starts. This is normal. A few moments later. After engine starts, you want to keep the revs at about 2000 rpm for a few seconds to help speed up the air bleeding process out of the lines. So engine has now started and you can take the job as done. Thank you for watching, like and subscribe if you like this video or would like more of this type and see you next time.